Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at uh, QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, for those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Uh, Over at digitalspy.com, there's a story here, Steam Machines, are they a missed opportunity from Valve? The... Uh, story starts off talking about the wide range of uh, steam machines that are available uh, or at least announced at CES 2014 this year and points out that the steam machines could have broken down the barriers into high-end PC gaming but there are 13 different machines on the market with more to come and Surely this is going to lead to confusion, particularly given the fact that they don't have them tiered as entry-level, mid-range, high-end, really high-end. They basically just have a, you know, a, a lot like Android, a glut of uh, systems uh, just kind of there, and there's going to be more, and there's no real way to differentiate or discern uh, between them. So I kind of agree with the author here. Uh, this potentially is a missed opportunity from... Uh, valve to to really um, you know to, 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 to compete with consoles particularly given the fact that it's that steam is going to be a closed ecosystem a lot like consoles are from Sony and Microsoft the ps4 and the and the uh, uh, Xbox one so uh, I'm curious to see what they're gonna do about it um over time but still you know i agree it's kind of a missed opportunity potentially from um forbes there's a uh, review from ewan spence uh, a jola review some rough edges but this linux smartphone shows promise he basically gives a really nice rundown of uh uh, this new uh, cellfin os powered uh, smartphone called jola from a company called jola and, uh, you know, basically says, you know, this is a great phone. It's a great start. There's still a couple of little rough edges. He gets into details on that. I'm not going to give it all away. You do need to go read the story. But uh, a pretty good start and, you know, definitely something that will be improved upon over time. Hopefully it turns into a really nice Linux-based phone, smartphone. So we'll be watching this to see what comes of it. From PeriscopePost.com, Steam OS now supports Intel and AMD graphics. Uh, building your own Steam box just got a heck of a lot easier because the Steam OS operating system isn't limited to NVIDIA GPUs anymore. As the latest Steam OS release, both Intel and AMD graphics are supported. Mind you, SteamOS is still very much in beta, and the the Linux video drivers are in a beta state as well, so don't expect too much. But essentially, if you have an AMD Radeon HD 5000 or later, or up, I should say, um, it will largely work. Um, Most Intel HD graphics work, but it's not clear which do and and don't. Obviously, this is like, the article points out, still very much in beta, so this will improve over time. So it'll be pretty interesting to see uh, what comes of this as things move forward. And I think we even, uh, on the last uh, episode, talked about how to install SteamOS, so pretty interesting. From digitaljournal.com, launch of operating system rival to iOS and Android has been delayed. Japanese mobile operator NTT Docomo said Friday that the launch of a new smartphone operating system to rival Google's Android and Apple's iOS has been pushed back owing to development delays. So uh, this operating system for smartphones is called Tizen. We've talked about it. It's been delayed, you know, more times than I care to even uh, recall. Um, It's based on the Linux operating system. It's the product tie-up between uh, companies from Japan 
China, South Korea, Europe, and the United States. Um, uh, Docomo, Intel, Fujitsu, and uh, Samsung and LG and China's Huawei and European mobile carriers Vodafone and Orange are all kind of in this uh, Tizen OS. They're trying to get a common operating system, you know, that works everywhere that's Linux based. It's 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 one of those things where. Uh, <laughs> It sounds great on paper, but it's turning out to be much, much harder to do in real life, uh, particularly when you've got multiple vendors and companies and countries involved. So should be, I'll, I'll be curious to see, uh, you know, I mean, like I said, we've been watching this for quite some time, so I'll be curious to see what comes of this over time. From IT News over in Australia, there's a story here. Microsoft earns kudos in a Linux Conf keynote. Google and Apple, less so. So, pretty interesting. Um, a Linux kernel developer, Matthew Garrett, during his keynote has said that uh, given the security uh, landscape and how it has changed over the past year or so with the releases you know, of the uh, NSA's uh, spying activities by Edward Snowden, um, it's become very important for... Uh, security to be implemented correctly on PCs, particularly with UEFI and Secure Boot. And he points out that uh, even though, and we've, you know, there's been a lot of onerous, you know, Microsoft is the devil because they're implementing Secure Boot and this and that and the other rather. Uh, Matthew Garrett here says, well, wait a minute, hang on a second. We need to give, at least give them somewhat, give them kudos because they allow you to change the keys that are used to sign the code that runs on this during secure boot. It's not particularly easy to do so. It could be much easier, but at least they're letting you change the keys. Whereas Google on Android and uh, Apple on OS 10 do not let you change the keys. Uh, when it comes to secure boot. So I, I can get on board with that. I mean, yes, there are a lot of things that Microsoft is just really does really terribly, but um, you know, this is one instance where if you really want to run something different, you can, you can put a new set of keys on there. So pretty interesting. From itworld.com, this is a story from Jim Lynch uh, as part of some of the CES coverage he's been doing. There's a Linux-powered AR-15 rifle targeting system. Check it out. You know, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on it or anything, but for those of you who uh, hunt heavily or that sort of thing, uh, this might be something you want to look at. From techspot.com, Red Hat joins forces with CentOS to boost open source innovation. Red Hat announced Tuesday that the company is joining forces with CentOS to develop a new CentOS in a bid to speed open source innovation. Several core members of the CentOS team will join the Red Hat payroll, but will continue working on CentOS as their primary job function, according to the announcement on the CentOS mailing list. Um, so Red Hat's business is centered around its popular operating system, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, otherwise known as RHEL. The company makes over a billion dollars a year by charging a premium for all software and support services it provides with its enterprise OS. Several components, including the Linux kernel, are subject to the GNU public license. Um, a team of developers took all of their code and gave birth to Cent OS, which is essentially a free Red Hat Enterprise Linux clone with Red Hat branding and other intellectual property removed. The Linux distribution caters to those who can live without official support. I mean, this is a lot like uh, Fedora, right? So anyway, they're partnering. They are partner partnering together. Boy, I can't talk today at all. So uh, should be pretty interesting to see what comes of this. That will do it for this episode of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.